Hello everyone. Today, I'm going to share this paper published in Nature Physics. Stress relaxation in epithelial monolayers is controlled by the ectomycin cortex. Written by Gloriam Karas. So they dealt with epithelial monolayer. As you know, this epithelial monolayer are one cell thick tissue sheets that line most of the body surface, separating internal and external environment. As a part of their function, they must withstand extrinsic mechanical force applied at high strain rates. However, little is known about how monolayers respond to mechanical deformations. Here, this article by subjecting suspended epithelial monolayer to stretch. They, are, they found that they dissipate stress on a minute time scale, and that relaxation can be described by a power law with an exponential cutoff at time scales rather than about one second, 10 seconds. This process involved an increase in monolayer length, pointing to active remodeling of cellular biopolymers at the molecular scale during relaxation. Strikingly, monolayers consisting of tens of thousands of cells relax stress with similar dynamics to single rounded cells, and both respond similarly to perturbation of ectomycin cytoskeleton. By contrast, cell cell junctional complexes and intermediate filaments do not relax tissue stress, but form stable connections between cells allowing monolayers to behave rheologically as single cells. Taken together, their data showed that ectomyosin dynamic governs the rheological properties of the epithelial monolayers, dissipating applied stress and enabling changes in monolayer lengths. Let's see one by one. Here, this article, they developed this machine, as you already observed previously. And they attach the keratinocyte sheet, epithelial sheet, this and this pole. And this is before stretching on stretch. And then this machine can automatically analyze force and their strain. And they stretch this epithelial sheet 30% and then measure 2 minutes. Uh, 140 seconds and then after that they relocate this bar this sheet to original status so this is their optical images before stretching you can see sheets like that and the beauty of this analysis is they remove they remove the ECM because most of the most of the people they analyze the epithelial sheet on the ECM, like culture plate or matrix gel or collagen. But here, they really, literally analyze the epithelial sheet itself. So that's why, without any substrate on the bottom, they can successfully culture the epithelial sheet, linking this, these two bars. While they're stretching, as you can see, sheets are stretched. And in the meantime, they analyze the force. Stress initially up to 1,500 Pascal significantly and, and very fast decrease over time and fluctuate. And when they go back to original strain, again, the stress can be zero. So they can, we, we can observe these two Status one is dramatically decrease the force, which is stress relaxation, and then they are flattened. Even they are flattened, their stress is also maintained around 500 or 200 Pascal. And then when they are released, their position to the original status, the stress is gone. So they found out these two different curve and then they generalize this this curve using the in vivo lava flying sheet 
this also this flying the flying sheet is also consisting of epithelial cell but this sheet has little ECM so this is a little amount of ECM you can observe but before stretch on stretch and stretch you can see they are really stretched and then this in in the meantime they can measure the force as a micronewton but actually graph is a little bit different from above one they mentioned that this is because of the ECM even though the amount is little they can affect the phenomenon also you can observe this dramatic decrease of force initially like within tens of seconds and then they are flattered and this is F it's before post stretching before stretching and after stretching 30 seconds you can see uh, they even though they are stretched and after stretching they exactly uh, diminish their length to the original status and then they compare it they found out that their this actin actually this F is uh, ecadrin ecadrin can visualize the cell morphology the cell morphology itself doesn't change while they are stretched while they are stretched anyhow when you enlarge it absolutely 30% is enhanced but they want to analyze while they are 30% 30 30 enhancing the length is there any change or reorganization of ecadrin but you, you cannot see anything which means that uh, their cell monolayer, their cell cell interaction didn't change that much. And then this is their uh, 3D analysis. Monolayer layer before, before stretch. While they stretch, absolutely this length is enhanced. And then when they are relaxed, when they reposition to original status, you can see this kind of buckling. This white line is original stage, but this red is their buckle, which means that while they stretch, cell 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 are more stretched literally, and then they try to maintain their status. So this buckling means while they stretch, the absolute length of epithelial cell is enhanced. But this is already observed in many literature. So, stress relaxation in cell monolayer involves a change in length. Only length is changed. No equilibrium redistribution and no other things. And then, as you mentioned here, when you think about the stress relaxation meaning, this original stress while they are stretched, they are relaxed up to a certain range. This is the meaning of the stress relaxation in a tissue. And then from the log stress and log time graph, they they are making like this graph. About within 10 seconds, as log scale graph, linearly they are gradually going down. And then over time, they are flatured. But in the ATP depletion, you can see gradually decreasing over time, no flatter. So which means that this initial stage dramatically decreasing the stress relaxation stress maybe here, 0 to 10 seconds, here 0 to 10 or 20 seconds. This is not dependent ATP. This is like this passive. This is a passive reaction of the sheet. But over 10 seconds later, when ATP is depleted, you can see change of their behavior of stress relaxation, which means that ATP dependent stress relaxation can be happening over 10 seconds. So that is why they focus on this later second phase. When they analyze second phase in detail, they, they calculate, they make one formula. I show you here. One formula is the analysis formula to D 
display this first page within 10 seconds and the later second page. 10 seconds. So they make this formula to model this search translation behavior. And then they found out that this alpha is related to the initial phase, first phase, and then this uh, this one related to the second phase. So uh, you can just simply say that this tau is related to the second phase and this alpha is related to the first phase, first phase. And then this is a log log scale graph, but when you see the real graph here, this initial stage within 10 seconds relates to the alpha. And then this second stage, while they are flattered to a certain force, which relates to the theta. So here, alpha also change under ATP dependent manner. Here, this alpha slope it just changed. Here, this slope, this slope is a little different, diminished. And then this theta second is around 20 seconds. And when you see this ATP here, sorry, yeah, I'll show you later. And then they found out that uh, they're in the first phase and second phase, anyhow, they are changed under ATP deplete the manner. And then they want to know which kind of component is related, related to this phenomenon. They categorize actin and myosin, cross linkers between actin and focal dead and actin and intermediate actin and microtubule, and adherin junction and intermediate filament and decimal So this is they are analyzing the flap study. Flap means that they bleached this protein and then over time how fast they are recovered they they image so from the initial stage to the later stage this when the color is changed that much which means they are dynamically activated so when you see actin and myosin 2 crosslinker from the blue color to yellow and red color they change while other junction intermediate filament black color, color is maintained, which means that this actin and myosin and cross linker are very mobile, while the cadherin adherin junction internal filament are less mobile. So this actin and myosin and cross linker are heavily involved in this stress releasing phenomenon. This whole experiment is under while cell sheets are stretched. So if they if cell sheets are really need this component, they should recover fast. This is the rationale, how they analyze this one. And then again, they checked the LAPB actin filament inhibitor, polymerase inhibitor. They found out that under LAPB treatment, as well as in cell cell interaction, as well as their distribution also changed. And when they check the cell selection curve, DMSO going down and then flat tube. But on the lab B, going down continuously without flat tube. So this affecting is very important to regulate the second phase. Then they again the check uh, this actinin 4 and then E is alpha actinin. This is alpha actin in four, and then actin, actin cross linker filament. So they check the effect of the effect of the actin cross linker filament and actin in four, but this data doesn't change, which means that, uh, as I show here, this is not dependent on the cross linker actin. And but this data can be changed under ectomycin contractility. When they treat this rock and then ARP23 and F is this 
uh, inhibitor, like forming, forming inhibitor, they all in increase, which means that this second phase is required related to this acromatic contractility. But cross-seeker itself doesn't affect. So if we combine this data and above data together, what we can get? So here they propose actin and actin myosin contractility and cross linker can be involved to affect the stretch induced sex relaxation. They propose from the flat analysis, recovery analysis, but when they re really treat or knock down using sRNA, shRNA, there is no change from the cross linker, but only change from the actinomatic contractility and actin filament component. So they found out actin filament component and actinomatic contractility is very important to regulate this second phase stress relaxation phenomenon. And number four, and then and then you can simply imagine, okay, so cell sheet, actually their distribution didn't change that much, but only actin and actomyosin contractility is important for stress relaxation under stretch. And then might be, when cell sheet can behave as a one single cell, is it possible or not? So they raise this question. So to lay this question, they compress the epithelial cell single while they are touched on the top on the compression force they measure the force and then this force graph is very similar to the star sheet stretch graph right initially going up and then first phase and second phase they flat shoot the force is maintained when they release the compression force they can go back to normal and then when they take this alpha later to the first phase and theta second related to the second flat time, there's no, they're very similar. See, 0.3 and 20 seconds. And here, also, 0.3 and 20, 20 seconds. So, when they utilize their proposed formula, this alpha and theta second is similarly detected from the cell shape and the single cell. And then here, and then from this single cell, they also check the effect of the cross linker alpha actin four, no change to the second phase. And then, but under actomycin inhibitor and the forming inhibitor, they are changed, right? And then from the mobile fraction using flat recovery test, actin actin cortex very highly detected, mobile, and another actin myosin and alpha actin filament, which are all related to the cross-linker and actin much contractility, is also highly mobile in single cell. So this figure four mentioned that the, the dynamic of stress relaxation and the extent of actin turnover are very similar in single cell and in monolayer. So they want to propose single single cell when they're compressed and cell sheet in the stretch they are behave similarly and what does it mean what does it mean is that uh, actually their force direction one is stretch one is compress but regardless of force direction or single or multi cell the basic mechanism how cell behave against the force is same in epithelial cell. They didn't mention about any cell type like fibroblast or neuron cell or mesenchymal cell. This is all related to the epithelial cell. Epithelial cell consists of almost layer of skin. So they have to be against external force to keep, to make them intact, to distinguish from outside to inside. So their integrity of the epithelial layer is very, very, very important for maintaining the homeostasis of skin. Not only skin, but also their internal, uh, internal organs like lung or even liver or other kind of organ. So, this is not like 
they are basically sharing same biological phenomena in case of single cell and multi cell. The important thing is that the important factor to govern the sex relaxation in active state is from the actin and ectomycin control tip. There's a last they proposed, okay, and there might be your cell sheet can behave as a viscoelastic behave. So you already see many kind of this elastic component and elastic plus uh, viscous component together. This model they propose. And then from the experiment and fitting, they are very similar. Which, which can say that rheological model that we can exactly mimic the stress and time under stretch condition. So they found out this K alpha and then R second. R second is how they're fast relaxing. Mm. And then K alpha is related to the elasticity. And elasticity doesn't be affected by ectomatic contractility, while the viscosity is heavily related to the ectomatic contractility. Okay. Because of that, this uh, total force sex relaxation phenomenon, the marker of this is heavily related to the ectomatic contractility. And then they model how stress relaxed fast from the, this rheological model. The modeling and the real value is very similarly plot as a single manner from the many inhibitor and different strain and speed. So they can say that forming mediated actin polymerization and myosin contractility contribute to rheological property during stress relaxation. Once again, the reason why they do this is from the figure 4, they propose they want to mimic, they want to make the formula to fit this stress and relaxing curve using this graph. And then, what is the property of the epicellar sheet? To answer that, might be the epicellar sheet has a rheological feature which is viscoelasticity. So because of the viscoelasticity, also they can mimic and model their behavior. So I'll show you one. In supplementary day, you can see many uh, kind of modeling and analysis. But the important thing I want to share this, yes. This is a we observe this kind of Maxwell model, elasticity and elastic plus viscosity model together, right? But this is a little upgrade version of rheological feature. So this is also they can mimic perfectly experimental and fit. And their fitting model you can see simultaneously. So not only this Maxwell model, the model parameter they propose using this, they, this is a real, more rheological feature they highlight. And then, here they mention that active branch, length change rate, press train modulus of elastic branch, and the time constant of rheological model. This, this many parameters can be gathered from the, this model. So they, that's why they propose and they, this from their proposed model, also this ectomarch contractility is important. And then not only ectomarch contractility, and this forming is also important for regulating this phenomenon. So this is published in 2019 in Nature Physics. So you can see many like formula and the experimental modeling and fitting and the how they describe the stress relaxation of epithelial cell. So the, our take home message from this paper is that when you see something, you always try to not only show the data, 
but also you can model something. And if you model it, most of the tissue or cell, they behave like viscoelastic manner. Not only elastic, already viscoelastic. So this is your take home message from this paper. And then if you deep understand the modeling or physics, might be you can model by yourself. Thank you.